Hey there, commanders. The Federal Gunship. It's an interesting ship to build. It offers a ton of advantages, but it also offers a ton of disadvantages that are a little bit hard to work with. If you get into one of these things, you have to be willing to be a patient flyer because it's not very fast and it turns like crap. It steers like some of the large ships, actually. Even with FA off, it's a beast to get her on target, but once you do, you can absolutely hammer things into the ground with the hardpoint setup that it gives you. It basically fits the gunship moniker very well, and the hardpoint placement makes this ship really good at attacking ground targets. So if you're into settlement raids, for example, you might give this ship some consideration, because with this massive hull value, you can survive a lot of incoming damage and still keep on fighting back, so long as you don't get your thruster shot out. Now, I'm going to go over this in pretty rapid fire so we can keep things brief. Reactive surface composites come highly recommended in basically any kind of PvE engagement. If you do use reactive surface on this ship, since it's going to be big and slow no matter what you do, you might as well lean into it with heavy duty grade 5 and deep plating. The 6A power plant should be armored grade 5 and monstered. The 6A thrusters should be dirty grade 5 with drag drives. That'll help you feel a little bit better on the turn rates, but not by terribly much. At 417 meters per second, you can be outrun by just about everything else with 30 drives in the medium class. So I wouldn't recommend trying to start a PvP fight in this ship with, uh, well, basically any hardpoint loadout. There are a few absolutely clutch PvPers who are willing to attempt this, but most players probably aren't up to it. I know I'm not. I wouldn't win a PvP fight in this ship. There's just no way. I'm not that good. Uh, 5A Frameshift Drive. Increased range grade 5 and mass manager if you prefer to travel and don't own a fleet carrier. If you do have a fleet carrier, then you might as well shield this thing and lean into that thick armor, because you're not going to be able to avoid a lot of incoming fire in this beast. 5A Life Support. I recommend Reinforced Grade 5, because the uh, well, you're not avoiding fire, and the cockpit canopy on this is pretty easy to shoot out, even incidental to PvE engagements. So you'll want to have plenty of time to get to a nearby station because, again, big and slow. 7A Power Distributor. This is the major strength the Federal Gunship brings to the table. This is the same distributor you'll find in a lot of large ships. It gives you a ton of headroom for hard points. You can run a lot of crazy stuff in here, which I've elected not to because of the way the shields are set up, and I'll get into that in a second. But with the 7A distributor, you'll want to run the typical charge-enhanced grade 5 with super conduits. The 5A sensors are long-range, because that's the typical choice in most PvE ships. Uh, 6C biweave shield generator. Thermal resistant grade 5. This is to balance the shield's resistances. And then low draw, because biweave shield generators suck a lot of distributor power. And they can be really abusive to manage if you aren't willing to uh, deal with that, low draw helps make your pip management a lot less of a stress. You can forget about your distributor for short periods of time without running out of shield regen. A 6D fighter hanger for PvE is highly recommended because it basically gives you an extra hard point to lay into something with. Uh, some federal gunships in PvP will run the fighter hanger to kind of abuse the net code a little bit and help them get away. Um, if you try to do any kind of tournament PvP, they'll probably make you take this out. If you don't want to run a fighter hangar or deal with a fighter pilot, a shield cell bank can fit in here, and if you do that, then probably a 6A shield generator is your best bet, since you've got a heat sink launcher over here to manage the output. 5D hull reinforcement package. Uh, basically, all of the hull reinforcement packages larger than a 4 are heavy-duty grade 5 and deep plating. That gets the absolute values up nice and high while keeping the resistance values balanced until you get down here to the size 2 where I have one kinetic resistant grade 5 and one thermal resistant grade 5, each with the experimental that amplifies the primary effect. So in uh, thermal resistance case it's reflective plating and in kinetic resistance case it's angled plating. That sacrifices some explosive protection, but it maximizes your kinetic and thermal, and it gives you a ton of headroom to survive being out with your shields down, because this shield setup is designed to recover as quickly as possible. You'll note shield recovery on this platform is about 30 seconds, with an additional 45 seconds to recover your shields. That means roughly every minute 20, minute 30, you're getting 100% of your shields back if you avoid incoming damage. And that means 
that you don't have to take as long a break between fights, so you can keep right on going until your hull eventually runs out. Now, this hardpoint setup is something that I've covered on smaller ships. It's every commander's bread and butter, multi-cannons and pulse lasers. Very low distributor intensity as weapon outfitting goes, but if you feel so inclined and want to experiment, you can toss plasma accelerators, railguns, other hydra weapons like beam lasers fit in here just fine because that distributor gives you a ton of room to play. Now, I choose not to play like that with this build because I want to go for something that's easy to get into so that people who fly this platform don't feel obliged to throw a ton of engineering at it right at first. Uh, this has a bunch of engineering blueprints on it, but you don't need them all. This is a conservative enough build that you'll be able to run most of this with minimal engineering, if any at all. So if you want to get into the Federal Gunship on the cheap and experiment and then maybe toss some blueprints at it, this is a good way to do it. And I always recommend it for players who aren't sure what they want to do when they get into a ship they're unfamiliar with. Multi-cannons and pulse lasers are just a great way to figure things out because you don't have to worry about spending a ton of money on them and you don't have to worry about whether or not your ship's capacitor can manage them. Sometimes you play with the mixes to get the balance just right, but the Federal gunship's got so much headroom we're running four pulse lasers and three multi-cannons, with the large and two mediums being um, where I put the multi-cannons and then the rest are the pulse lasers. Now, engineering. For the multi-cannon, the large one, I recommend overcharged grade 5 and auto loader. The Federal gunship's kind of slow, so it doesn't have a lot of range control. If it could boost and turn aggressively, I might put short-range blaster on here with probably still auto loader but with this ship you probably want to lean on being able to to knock on targets from greater distances uh, multi-cannon number two is high capacity grade five with corrosive shell this helps kind of recover some combat endurance because the uh, multi-cannon running corrosive shell will run out first if you don't have it set up with high capacity that gimps a lot of your uh, outgoing damage since none of the multi-cannons have a piercing value high enough to damage most of the large ships if you happen to encounter one, uh, you'll take significant debuffs to your damage output if you aren't using corrosive shell. Uh, overcharged grade 5 and auto loader for the last multi-cannon. It's a nice balanced mix. Toss whatever you want here though if you feel like playing. Multi-cannons, uh, I don't recommend running anything with uh, rapid fire. I've experimented with it on other ships, and the multi-cannon's combat endurance is already kind of an issue if you try to do any long-term bounty hunting. Um, Overcharged balances things out. It, it, it's a solid place to start. But these other things are viable, too. If you've got a particular strategy in mind, feel free to play. Uh, multi-cannons. First medium is running rapid fire phasing sequence, as is the second medium. This... Uh, basically makes phasing sequence do the most damage it possibly can, so you can do a little bit of chipping away at the hull. The uh, first small pulse laser is running rapid fire emissive, and the second small pulse layer is running rapid pulse laser, is running rapid fire scramble spectrum. Uh, emissive munitions prevents a PVE ship from dropping off your radar if they pop a heat sink, and rapid fire scramble spectrum randomly disables an internal module every time you get a, a hull hit with a time delay. So get a hull hit, it lasts like 10 seconds, there's a cooldown, and then after the cooldown expires, the next tick of scramble spectrum will cause another random internal to malfunction. It's a good way to mess with people in PvP. There are some PvPers who will throw, a, if they've got a small hard point available, they'll throw something like this at it. Uh, utility mounts. Shield booster number one, A-rated, kinetic-resistant grade 5 with force block. Shield booster number two, thermal-resistant grade 5 with thermal block. This helps balance out the shield resistances and gets you into the uh, mid-40s on explosive and kinetic and the mid-50s on thermal, which is a good idea because NPCs will favor thermal damage when they're attacking your shields. And incidentally, uh, this logic works in PvP too because the two principal weapons, plasma accelerators and railguns, deal a ton of thermal damage incidental to what they do. Uh, chaff launcher to jam incoming gimbaled weapon fire up, ammo capacity grade 1, since long PvE fights tend to require a lot of these charges, it helps improve synthesis efficiency if you go that way, or if you don't, it helps you last longer between trips to the nearest station and or fleet carrier. Heatsink launcher, ammo capacity grade 1, for basically the same reasons. You could replace this with a point defense if you were worried about missiles with your shields down, I'm not that worried about it on a ship like this. 
You do have to keep in mind, though, that missiles, even fired by bots, do a ton of external module damage, and in a protected fight, you might see some of these hard points start to malfunction. If that becomes an issue the way that you play, then you can replace one of your hull reinforcements with an AFM. That kind of helps things out in PvE. Uh, not all of my bounty hunting ships do that, but it is a way to, to make things work out. Now keep in mind that your fighter hangar is a great way to divide incoming fire. If you're going up against multiple hostile NPCs at the same time, the fighter hangar will help pull them off. If you get familiar with quick keys to give your fighter orders in combat, you can have your fighter switch between different targets so that the target giving you the most aggression could potentially be pulled away from you while you attack something else. There's all kinds of fun things you can do to play with in there. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Budget. This is 175.8 uh, million credits to get going, and that's just for the cost of the materials. Engineering obviously takes longer. Uh, and the, one of the perks of setting the ship up this way is you've got extra power headroom on the reactor, which means that in the event you get your shields dropped and the reactor starts to malfunction, you're less likely to have power management issues. I don't think I've done a video on power management, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the queue because... There's a lot you can do with power management to make your ship more survivable. If you do start placing thirstier weapons in your hardpoint brackets and you push this value closer into the 90s, you are going to want to pay special attention to how your power management is set up so that if your power plant gets damaged, it doesn't completely shut your ship down. Uh, I can get into that another day, though. That's a, a video deserving its own topic. Uh, let's see. I think... That's everything. Um, so I will, oh, let's see, offense profiles. I'll just cover this real quick. Uh, the weapons capacitor with all pips in is a minute 14, so you can sustain a lot of DPS output. If you pull all of your pips off weapons, you've got about five seconds. So uh, be a little careful if you are going to pull all your pips out. I recommend having your multi cannons and pulse lasers on separate fire groups one on the primary, one in the secondary. So if you do have to pull pips away from your weapons distributor, you can use just your multi-cannons to help buy yourself some time putting damage output while you reposition or charge your system's capacitor. Uh, let's see, I think that's it. So I will catch you guys later.